Hi Pisces, welcome to your reading for October 2024. A um, couple things I want to talk to you about before we get into the reading. So please just give me this couple minutes. Um, first of all, I am doing opposite signs again for the month of October. Same thing I did in September and I just love the way they turned out. And it's interesting because I just realized you and Virgo are my last two readings for October. And interesting that we just had the eclipse in the Virgo Pisces under your sign, under Pisces. Um, but the Virgo Pisces cycle was back in, um, in November 2015 to I think May 2017. So the reason why I'm telling you this is this would be a good time just to think back to that period in your life. What were you going through? Um, it's not about recreating it. It's really just to see, you know, like how much you have grown from that point. Um, the next time we'll have this, the Virgo Pisces um, energy will be, I believe February 2027. So let me just tell you a little bit about um, what you as a Pisces special and Virgo. This is definitely a, a time to pull on both energy. Um, this is a time where it can really stir matters relating to your health, your well-being um, and your spirituality. That's a big thing, your spirituality. Um, the more you can stay focused on like the finer details, but also staying organized, which is a Virgo trait. So you can see how both really play a role here. Um, this is going to be a highly creative cycle that really is going to bring you a lot of inspiration, even visions. This is definitely a time you want to trust your intuition if never before um, this is also a time to really draw out your superpowers um, especially again your intuition that is one of your superpowers remember that about yourself um, try not to second guess it you know it's that first instinct you get this is also going to be a period of time where you're letting go of you know you're letting go of what no what no longer hmm how do I say this like like this is about a new cycle beginning and this cycle is going to run until February 2027 so we want to think about this cycle as like let's say our planting and harvest time like what can I plant now so that I can really see that harvest you know in in 2027 before then of course but i feel like it's it's really speaking of a new cycle and if i think of it that way this is a new cycle it's like a brand new day a new opportunity to do things um to see my life to vision my life the way that i would really like it to be so you do have to think about you know what needs to be cut out what's no longer serving you Who's no longer serving you? This is about you coming really to your highest energy and um, no excuses for it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel you're going to be powerful and it's just as it's meant to be. So those who can't handle your power, you know, then I don't know. You may want to think about cutting those ties. So again, think back to like around 2015, 2017. What were you doing at that period of time? You know, I'm just trying to reminisce myself. Um, and there were some big changes taking place at that time in my life. Um, but anyway, so I just felt like I had to cover that for you. It, it only, and I did do a Virgo new moon. Um, which does somewhat relate also to this, this lunar eclipse. Um, but anyway, so 
again, we're going to do opposites this month. And I feel like no, no two signs are going to fit better together than Pisces and Virgo. Um, probably going forward. So definitely we want to, and I'm a Virgo son. So I know that you carry certain energies that would definitely benefit me to look at consider taking on myself and vice versa so um another thing new we're doing this month instead of using the um deck of major arcanas for your bullet points in your reading i'm going to use the romance angels instead and one of the reasons why I chose to use this, first of all, I'm working with a company who um, offered me some free cards and that for a promotional video, which I which I have yet to do. Still have to do it. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I didn't I did not love all the cards, but the Romance Angels is a deck that I had before I moved um, in with my boyfriend, and I left. Well, my daughter begged me to leave him behind because I could only take two suitcases with me. So everything else got left behind. But I definitely missed this deck. So when I saw it on their site, it was the first thing I ordered. So the Romance Angels, we're going to use them like bullet points. We, of course, are going to get Mother Mary's words of wisdom for you. Um, to do the clarifying... Uh, I can never pick these cards up to do the clarifying this month. We're going to use the Tredivia Tarot. And by the way, I'm going to use the same decks for Virgo for Virgo that I use for you. Um, because I am looking for synchronicities. Some of you may, may be connected to a Virgo. So we'll use those to go deeper. And then for the main spread, I'm going to use the Universal Tarot. All right. But let's start with Mother Mary. By the way, I don't know if I said this is for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising. Um, those intuitively guided for sure. Thank you for paying attention to your intuition. Uh, you're going to be in love with the Pisces romantically, platonically. And I feel like, you know, it. Uh, whatever, whatever brought you here, I feel like your guides know you're here. And I read through my spirit guides, so... You know, and my guides connect to your guides. That's why a reading can resonate with so many different people. Especially if you watch your reading with your spiritual ears. Um, but this is also a great time to ask your own guides to give you signs of confirmation through the reading. Whether it be just the way it makes you feel. You know, goosebumps. Some people... You know, they cry, they laugh, it brings out emotions, and that's really what I want. Um, yeah, I forget, I forget why I was saying all that. But anyways, yeah, definitely ask your guides for confirmation. And let's begin. You know, when I say let's begin, I feel like the minute I hit start, we have begun. Because again, I really do connect to my guides. And I ask my guides to connect to your guides, to anyone who's going to be here, whether they know it or not yet. All right, well. Got three. We have health. Interesting, because that's one of the things you do want to watch out. Or you, I, I say watch out for. Um, just be, you know, just know where your health is at. Like, what, what are the things I can do to improve my health? Um, whether it be, like, mental, physical. Let's see what it says. My prayers for healing miracles have been heard and answered. Health. Then we have truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. This is a good trait to take on from this day moving forward. Truth. I am lovingly honest with myself and others. And then mercy. Mercy. I am kind and thoughtful towards myself and others. 
if you notice, it puts you first. And I feel like that's important to recognize that, right? Because if you're not being truthful with yourself, how are you going to know if anybody else is, right? If, you know, you're not being kind to yourself, you know, does that show other people that you don't really care? Um, even your health, I feel like, because I feel like health is talk. First of all, it's saying your prayers are being answered. Um, and maybe, maybe being truthful in a way sets you free. And when I say set you free, I mean set you free in a way where worry goes away, where you really start to believe in your intuition. You make choices and decisions based on what your intuition tells you, right? Not a fear-based mind. Um, you know, this is really your time to evolve, Pisces. And I feel it. I already feel it. So I hope that the messages will follow. All right. So let's put them over here. And they will definitely let us know why they're in the reading. All right. I'll bring the lid down. So let's go ahead and bring in the romance angels. Give them a cut. All right. Um, and I don't know if I said this, the reason why I bring in the romance angels is love is always a part of our story. You know, I feel like when I'm doing a reading, I'm doing, I'm reading your life and love is always somewhere in there. So I thought, let's go ahead and use the romance angels. But really just as bullet points. I haven't done Virgo reading yet, but I will do it after yours. And this is the one time that I would say um, it might benefit you to watch Virgo's reading. I mean, I haven't done it yet. I just have this feeling. Look at this. Calling in your soulmate. Calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visu visu visual visualization. Oh, why can't I say that? Visualizing helps bring you together. Boy, I think I just said something about that too. Like the vision, see it in your mind's eye. Calling in your soulmate. You know, it's making me feel like, of course the soulmate already exists. But it's making me feel like it's predestined. Like, like this is the time that we agreed to come into each other's life. Probably after a period of hardship. I feel like that's a lot of times when a soulmate comes in. Like after the hardship. Maybe even during it. We have hmm, past life relationship. Yeah. Well. That makes sense because I do feel like soulmates have had past lives together. You have known each other before. Feels even more predestined. Express your love. Go ahead and make the romantic gesture. Don't be afraid. I think we get so afraid of being turned down. But the truth is, I'd rather be turned down than played with. Like, you know, if you love me, love me. If you don't, then don't. Trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith. Okay. 
So calling in your soulmate, your prayers, affirmations, and vis visualizations have been or helped bring you together. Past life relationship. You have known each other before. Express your love. Go ahead and make that romantic gesture and trust. Trust that the situation is calling for you to have faith. I don't know why, but I feel some romance in the air. Um, it feels like this may come about in a very romantic way. All right, let's bring in the Universal Tarot, which will be the main spread, the main event. There, they all read together. Give them one more shuffle. And let's give them a cut. All right. Seven of Pentacles. Well, that kind of verifies what I was feeling. You know, like this is meant to happen. Seven of Pentacles. Um, first of all, it is, it's about patience. It's teaching patience, right? Um, I often relate this to like an apple tree. One of these apples is becoming ripe, uh, ripe for the picking. The patience is I don't want to pick the apple before it's ripe. I often feel this is like your tree of life. The these these pentacles on this tree are really your soul seeds of intention. I feel like these are the seeds we were able to plant before we even came into this lifetime. Because I don't feel like all seeds we plant beforehand. I feel like, you know, a lot of it is free will. A lot of it is learning. Think of Earth as the classroom, right? But just from the the romance angels, this makes sense because it feels like it's saying that there's a love that's about to come together and it feels like really the right time. And maybe I had to have had some patience up until this point. You know, and in number seven, seven represents spirituality to me. And this period of time is all about your spirituality, your intuition, how you want your life to look. Hello, full. Hello, new beginning. You know, the fool is about taking a leap of faith. I find it interesting. He's, he's looking right, the, per, the fool's looking right back at the seven of pentacles. Almost like the fool knows that this one seed is coming to fruition. And I'm ready for this new beginning. You know, it is about a leap of faith, but for some reason I feel like I'm not even sure it feels like a leap. It just feels right. So we have a new beginning. But this new beginning is one of your soul seeds of intention. I can't help but think it's a soulmate. Whoa. We have the Four of Pentacles. We have the Queen of Pentacles, Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn. I'm going to do five across. Interesting how out of four cards, three of them are pentacles. 
You know, in the Queen of Pentacles, I call her my psychic detective. This is someone who has really learned to read between the lines. Um, and she's sitting next to the Four of Pentacles. I feel like it's speaking about you. And um, potentially feeling more grounded in your life than maybe you felt in a while. We have the Ten of Swords. Hmm. We have the Two of Swords. And we have the Seven of Wands. Well, here comes our human mind. How comes our human mind? So, Ten of Swords. You know, I feel like, first of all, just what the moon is calling for is the visions of what's new and what can be next in my life, but also the realizations of maybe what's held me back, what's held me down. Ten of Swords, you know, it is like dagger after dagger after dagger. It can speak about a period of time where it just feels like everything was going wrong. Um, I feel like if this is relating to love at all, it makes sense that the Two of Swords would come out next because Two of Swords is like a blindfold. There's something I don't want to face. There may be a truth that I'm hiding from myself. Maybe I hoped that someone else was going to be the one, but it kind of feels like it's not. Now, when I say, you know, in a way I was hoping that someone else would, let's just say, evolve themselves, I don't feel like they have. And I feel like this is this affects your decision making, you know, with the blindfold on. And then it moves into the Seven of Wands, which talks about standing your ground. But honestly, I'm not sure why you feel like you need to stand your ground at this moment. Because really where my attention is going to is the fool who's looking at the Seven of Pentacles. Maybe this Ten of Swords and this Two of Swords is relating back to the Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles, you know, it does speak about, it can speak about a home. It can speak about really becoming grounded. And I do feel like that's part of it. But also it can be resistance, like resistance to other people's ideas, um, what they have to say. All right, well, let's keep going. Look at that, the Nine of Swords. Worry. It's worry. But the meaning of the card is unnecessary worry. You know, it's interesting because I feel like some of you may have, like, flipped back in your mind to, like, 2015 to 2017 and there may have been someone in your life that um i don't know i just felt like didn't love you right and that may be some energy you're still hanging on to because the full represents new something new beginning um Yet the Ten of Swords, the Nine of Swords, the Two of Swords make me a little leery of whether I'm just going to accept it or not. Now, the Fool, if we took away these swords, absolutely would just step right into it. And maybe that's what I want to do. But then these swords raise their ugly head. Let's so not forget the Nine of Swords is unnecessary worry. 
And I guess if some of you like had someone on your mind, but you know, they're the ones who kept putting these swords in you, you know, one after another, after another. Um, and it can even turn into our own thought system. I expect bad things to happen. And then they do. Well, the fool feels like, no, I expect good things to happen. And they do. All right. We have the sun. Beautiful. Under the queen. Next to the nine. And then we have the eight of cups. Beautiful. And the reason why I'm saying beautiful is this is exactly the energy I feel like we need to really clean or clear the cobwebs away. Because the ten of swords and the nine of swords and the two of swords, they kind of feel like cobwebs of what was. Eight of Cups means that you're taking the time to really look within your emotional house to understand it. You know what I mean? Even to take your blame, the blame off of you. Um, because sometimes we get connected to people who, you know, the best thing I can say is they just don't know how to love. And unfortunately, we fall in love with them. And... You know, as a Pisces, you can take it very, I mean, who doesn't, I guess. But if someone breaks our heart, it can take us a while to heal that heart. But again, this is about something new. And I feel like to get to the fool's energy, I've got to go through the Eight of Cups. I've got to do some emotional clearing. I've got to understand, and the sun right next to it, it's the illuminator. So it's going to illuminate to you, you know, those cups that have been knocked over and how to overcome them, how to move on from them. Remember, in the Eight of Cups, this person's moving to the Nine of Cups, and that's inner harmony. And maybe that's really important that you have this inner harmony before everything really opens up the door. Even though I did say in the beginning that for some of you, I feel like even as you're going through maybe a difficult time, um, I don't feel like that stops this person from coming in. Maybe it's exactly when I need them. But in the same breath, I still want to look at these swords because I want to also be what it is that I want, right? I want to be able to give the love that I want returned back to me. That's the law of attraction, right? I got to be what it is I want. You know, if I myself am, am living in lower vibrational energy, well, of course, what I'm going to track back to me is that same type of energy. You know, Pisces, I get this feeling like you're done with any fighting. You know, I feel like what you're really looking for is a nice, calm, but adventuresome life, you know, with new opportunities. And I feel like that's exactly what wants to open up for you. But it is important that we understand where we've been. And this can certainly go back the whole way to 2015, to 2017, two years. You know, the one thing I want to say is if this is about love that was started back then, but it still hasn't like settled into a relationship, I feel like that may be your answer. Because I do feel like you're doing this emotional clearing and that emotional clearing is what opens you up to the new. Judgment. 
judgment. This is your spiritual team. And they are calling you to the present moment. And that's where the fool lives. The fool lives in the present moment. Why are they calling you to the present moment? Because there's about to be a rebirth. It just feels like it's time. Am I ready? I feel like if you've gone through the Eight of Cups energy, that emotional deep dive, and you come out with real truth, then I feel like, yes, you're ready. And by the way, it's mirroring calling in your soulmate. You know, to me, well, I was just going to say, to me, that means that you're going to be inspired. You're going to be guided. And then out comes the Ace of Wands, which to me is inspired action. You know, the fool's not left on by the full self. The fool's being guided here. And the fool knows that. So, kind of beautiful the judgment comes out. Letting what needs to end, end. Allowing these rebirths to take place. Getting excited for the potential of what lies ahead. You know, the fool doesn't know what lies ahead. But I'm going to, I'm putting an end to the past, right? All I'm taking with me is the wisdom of my lessons. And that I never lose. Full knows he or she is being guided. But by the way, I don't feel like it's just you being guided. Because if we look right up, it's under past life relationships. You have known each other before. It's like it's helping you two to come together. We have the death card. Okay. First of all, this is a card of Scorpio. This is endings. This is the closing of doors. But this is just like judgment so that there can be a rebirth. You know, when we do close these doors, a new door always opens. And it's showing us the new door through the full. But it's also showing like that new door consists of your, you know, your soul seeds of intention. And some of them are becoming ripe. I know one is love. And I know what the death card is asking for. The ten of swords, that nine of swords. Remember, nine of swords is a lot of worry. But it's unnecessary worry. And if I still carry that around, then there's something... I haven't cleared yet. And sometimes it can be an old lover's energy. And maybe the way they treated me, I'm just unsure. How do I know the next one won't treat me the same way? Well, that's when you think about your own vibration. Your spirituality. Your intuition. Close the door of yesterday, and I promise that your tomorrow will open up for you. Two cards that speak about rebirth. Two cards that speak about soulmates. Two cards to speak about being in the present moment energy, the full and judgment. And then your spiritual team saying, you as the full, I'm going to help guide you. The three of swords. And then the tower. You know, 
It's definitely showing the past. And, um... It does look difficult. But that was the past. Um, it definitely is showing, like, you know... Boy, I mean, to be honest with you, I feel like what you need right now is a soulmate. Because I feel like a soulmate will help. Well, in all areas. And by the way, you help each other. But... I feel like um, I feel like you've been dealing with like betrayal and sadness and heartache and that type of energy and untruths and unknowns that it's hard just to have faith, right? It's hard just to have faith. But yet that's exactly what this is calling for, faith or your intuition, because again, you are going to be guided, but I mean, the death card is really speaking loudly. You know, this has nothing to do with my past. Now, when I say soulmates, of course, you could have known each other in this lifetime, but you definitely know each other. You know each other for eternity. Um, and why am I saying that? Um, because first of all, I don't feel like whoever this soulmate is, I do not feel like it's this one who put all these daggers in you. Um, but yet I feel like we do need to look at our own vibration. You know, where was my vibration? Did I believe in myself? Do I know that I deserve better? Am I willing to live in a higher vibration? And therefore, what, what vibrates back to me must be of the same vibration. As I learn all this, my life starts to change. I start to realize, realize the power I have in creating my own life. You know, even the towers are part of life. You know, it's an ending. But yet the death card almost is saying like, but let it end. Let it end because the tower is mirroring that ten of swords. Why would I want any more of that? I don't. All right, let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Well, hello, world. The next chapter. That makes so much sense. Pisces, that makes so much sense. I, I feel like the super moon in your sign is giving you so much power. And I don't feel like you even recognize it yet. But you will. And I also want to just say, like, think about that. Because I want you to think about your vibration. You know, and thinking about, like, let's just say old loves who just hurt, right? Do I allow that energy to be part of my decision-making going forward? You know, of course, I don't want to return to heartache. But I also don't want to return to that type of love. This is who I want. I want my soulmate. And I feel like that's exactly what judgment is saying. Then just be ready. Be ready, my child. All right, let's use the Trivia Tarot to give him a shuffle. In the cut. And we're going to start at the beginning. But we are going to read it as a whole. Hello, King of Cups. First card. Didn't want to come up with the other ones. 
um, and be Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. But you know what I'm going to say. Other than that, it certainly doesn't have to be. So this king, this is someone who, you know, I'm thinking of Rihanna song, has love on the brain. This is someone in the upright who really appreciates love, relationships, that special person. Like you are my special person. Male or female, by the way. Mm -hmm. The Knight of Cups. Unexpected Cup. Of fulfillment. Unexpected cup of love. How interesting is coming right over the full. And it's touching both the soulmates and past life relationships. It's also mirrored by the Ace of Wands. Pisces, you're being guided. You know, this doesn't have to just speak of love. It's a cup of fulfillment. But because we have calling in your soulmate, I feel like your soulmate hears you spiritually. You know, because I feel you yourself are being guided. Well, so is this person. They would also be guided. So an unexpected couple fulfillment right over the fool. And a fool who says, I'll take a leap of faith. I'll take a chance. You may not know this person is your soulmate right off the bat. But I have a feeling it won't, it won't take long to figure that out. These cards are so hard to pick up. The Hermit. Interesting. So there's your opposite sign. There's the Virgo Pisces placement. Um, coming over the Four of Pentacles. So certainly can represent a Virgo. But this really speaks about your spirituality. You know, it can talk about a period of time when you've gone through, you know, what we call the Dark Night of the Soul. It just means anything... That felt so difficult that it was hard to find the light. The hermit really realizes as the hermit's going through this that I am the light. I am my own savior. I feel like the hermit is a natural healer. You know, this is someone who is not afraid to ask those deep questions you know to their guides looking for real clarity spiritual clarity but to use on this earthly plane and some of you may be connected to a Virgo judgment again <clears throat> All right, let's take a second because Hermit's the number nine and nine is about reflection. And that's exactly what the Hermit's doing. He's really reflecting on a spiritual level. Um, but really to, you know, I'm seeking wisdom to use on this spiritual plane or on this earthly plane though. Um, but because it's a nine, nine speak to me about final reflection. 
right? Reflecting upon the hard parts of my life and really how I've overcome them. You know, being proud of who you are today and what you have overcome and the things you may still be overcoming. You know, there's so much spiritual support here for you. Um, soulmate aside. So again, calling you to the present moment. It's like the reflection of the hermit. It's like, okay, that period of time is now ending. We have beautiful, the Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles to me is your guardian angel energy. This knight, first of all, it speaks of patience. It's a slow moving knight, but it moves slow on purpose. This knight comes in in the right time, not before, not after. But it will come in the right time. This knight brings you a pentacle. And this pentacle is truly meant to enhance your life. And by the way, I don't feel like it's a one-time thing. I feel like it's like when your spiritual team is like, okay, she, he is really picking up on the signs. Let's send more. And they do. You know, it makes sense with judgment coming first. That is talking about, you know, bringing yourself back to the present moment again, allowing, you know, being open to the potential of a rebirth. And the Knight of Pentacles is like, and then I'll take it over from here. And then you have the Two of Pentacles over the Two of Swords. That kind of makes me happy. And I'll tell you why, because the Two of Swords is that blindfold. It's just not wanting to face something. There's some type of truth that we may be hiding from ourselves. And sometimes if it's relating to love, we could be, you know, maybe we're not being honest that someone that we had fallen for just is no good for us, right? They're never going to be who it is that we need them to be. And it really is not you. It's just who they are. And I'm saying that because I feel like there's a need to take this weight off your own shoulders about this. You know what I mean? Like, clearly, I can see that you had hoped someone would have been different, but they weren't. They weren't. So, I do feel like you are letting that go, but I, I feel like some of the remnants of that energy might still exist. Now, I like the Two of Swords being replaced by the Two of Pentacles. Because to me, well, you know, they call the Two of Pentacles a juggler's card. I, I really feel it's about using your logical mind. You know, anything that comes into your life, you know, whatever this Knight of Pentacles is bringing, which again, I feel is a soulmate, but maybe even more than that, um, you still can say yes or no. That's your free will. So I can either use a fear-based mind. And if I am using a fear-based mind, that's a good indication that I haven't cleared the past. Or I'm going to use my logical mind. Like what harm would it be for me just to step into this? You know, your spiritual team has come out twice already. And they don't want you living in the past. They want you in the current energy so that your new tomorrows can start to open up. Let's not forget, we have the world on the bottom of the deck. That does speak about a new chapter. You know, but I feel like the world chapter is like what's ever in that chapter. Chances are like if it's love, I feel like it's for the rest of our lives. If it's you know, a job or a creative outlet. I feel like it's something we'll do for the rest of our lives. Something we'd want to do. All right, let's keep going.
you know, Mother Mary gave you truth. And in the Two of Swords, that's the one thing that, you know, it ties it back to that. The truth is that, that blindfold. Justice. Carta Libra. Um, you know, justice is about cutting ties. But the ties that you're cutting have left you unbalanced anyway. You know, like if you feel like, oh man, I've been living an unbalanced life. There's some ties that need to be cut. Sometimes it's just energetically. Like maybe I haven't realized how much power I've given someone. Even if they're no longer in my life. Justice is about making you whole again. That's her job. To make you whole again. And by the way, she's coming under the Knight of Cups. And the Ace of Wands right below it. You know, it's coming over the Seven of Wands. And that can be the energy of defending oneself. But then I feel like you have to ask yourself, at what point is it no longer benefit me to keep um, defending myself? I'm feeling different things, but really what I'm feeling is, you know, I do feel like there's an old relationship that still has a few little hooks in you. And, you know, this is a time when you really want to let go of the things and the people that just aren't working in your life, you know, and you want to really, and I really, really mean this, Pisces, have visions for how you want your life to look. Because I feel like you're manifesting as you go along. With divine's help, by the way. And let's just say you don't feel comfortable in that. Well, your spiritual team is still helping to lead you. They're simply saying, just be in the present moment. And put your faith in us. We have the Eight of Wands over that Nine of Swords, but also under the Hermit and also under Ur, the Death card below it. So the Eight of Wands, to me, it's what I think about, I bring about. Coming over the Nine of Swords, that means that I'm creating more worry for myself, right? Because I'm thinking in this, in this format, and therefore, the universe must meet me. But let's remember that Nine of Swords says it's unnecessary. This worry. It's also fast-moving action. Or fast-moving energy. Who knows? Maybe by the simple act of cutting energetic ties... It's what really helps open everything else up. Now, I kind of love the Eight of Wands under the Hermit. Because I feel like this is you coming together with your spirituality. This is you trusting in that part of yourself. This with the Eight of Cups. I was going to say again, oh, here it is right here. Eight of Cups. Interesting. Two eights back to back. Really three eights. 88, 888. Two knights. One bringing in love. Well, a cup of fulfillment. And the other knight is what literally brings it into your physical world. I wouldn't be a little surprised if 
you and this soulmate have had similar experiences. I find that a lot in my readings, um, both personal readings and YouTube readings where, um, you know, soulmates have lived very similar lives. Doesn't mean everything was the same, but you probably have been through like, like let's like a really difficult relationship and they probably have been too. The sun is your illuminator and it's illuminating the eight of cups and it's coming next to the eight of cups. You know, what I love about the eight of cups is first of all, yes, I'm bold enough to really look within to look at the cups that have been knocked over, the things that haven't gone right, the things that resulted in towers, maybe more than one time. And just no longer accepting it. No longer. And that simple act will move you into the state of inner harmony. What a perfect time for things to then just flow. You know, I feel like the energy wants to flow, but I feel like there's different things in here that's kind of stopping them. But I feel like we can get beyond that. Excuse me. Okay, sorry, I had a knock at the door. Hello, marriage card. This is true commitment. Can't really see it through this image. But it's in the line of calling in your soulmate. It's in the line of the seven of pentacles, your tree of life. It's coming right over judgment. Commitment. You know what I love about the four of wands? Is there's nobody kicking and screaming here. This talks about two people that, you know, when they do come together, I don't feel like they ever leave each other's side again. I can't promise that because of free will. But I almost but what I'm really feeling is because I feel both the soulmates have really been through it. And if both of them have, like, come to this understanding over it, you know, and what I mean by that is I'm not going to allow it to, again, affect what, you know, my future can look like. It's a beautiful omen. Queen of Cups. So we have the King of Cups and the Queen of Cups with the Knight of Cups connecting them. Now, that is probably you. And it's definitely showing you being guided. But what are you being guided to? I mean, literally, it's bringing you out. The Knight of Cups and the Fool. And the King of Cups, the same energy. Same energy. So they're sharing the same energy. Now, it doesn't have to mean that, you know, we're only talking about water signs. But really what I feel like it's saying is um, this is like-minded energy. You know, this is two people now who... Appreciate love. Appreciate true commitment. The moon. So if we had any doubt, was if this queen of cups was you, now we know. So this is your major arcana. It's coming over the death card. So maybe asking you yourself. Directly to you. What doors need to be closed? 
so that I can start living a dreamy type of life. You know, the kind of life that was meant for you. Dreamy. I don't know if anybody takes rejection harder than the cups. I mean, we all take it hard. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like you take it right in your inner child. We have the Queen of Wands. Hello, Ten of Cups. Wow. Okay. Let's take a second here. Let's just look at the four corners of the Chitivia Tarot. The King of Cups. The Knight of Pentacles. The Four of Wands. The Marriage Cups. And then the Ten of Cups. The house of harmony. The house of love. It's interesting it's coming over the tower. But here's the thing. I feel like the tower. What was a tower. I feel like it's being eradicated. It's being forgotten about. I feel like as soon as this enters your life. It's almost like you know better. Like you see the difference between just the levels of love. Man, if there was ever a time to trust your intuition, it's now. If you are looking, you know, and you don't even have to be looking because honestly, I feel like soulmates come in sometimes the most unexpected of times, in the most unexpected of ways. I only have to look at my own story to know that. And, you know, the fool is not trying to really determine the outcome. The fool is happy to live in the present moment, right? But then the fool receives this cup. And because the fool's looking right back at the Seven of Pentacles, it's like this fool knows. Like, I just know. I just know. I feel like the death card with your major arcana over it is for some reason tying me back to this Knight of Pentacles coming over the Ten of Swords. So I feel like Part of when this night, because remember, this night comes in in the right time. And that's that. And the right time may be where I am no longer allowing the Ten of Swords to affect me. You know, maybe I just have to tell myself that I wish something had gone different. But for whatever reason, it didn't. And, you know, I don't want to get lost in that. I don't want to think that that's it because this is saying anything other than that. This is saying get ready. Get ready for a brand new chapter that's opening up that just, it. listen, it's full of love. It's full of love. Commitment. I mean, how interesting that the marriage card is mirroring the Ten of Cups. You know, to me, that's a house of laughter, love, joy. Doesn't mean that there's no problems, right? Because that wouldn't be real life. But I feel like in this house, we work it out. We work it out. Hmm. I'm just looking around to see, is there anything else I want to look at 
feel like it's pretty clear. And um, so the Knight of Cups, again, that unexpected couple fulfillment, which is a soulmate. And one that you've had a past life with. So you'll be very familiar to each other. And that's why some of you may even has, have similar experiences. And then the other night, the Knight of Pentacles, Guardian Angel. I come in the right time. I promise that I will enhance your life. But I ask something of you in return. And that is to close the doors. You know, learn to close the doors when chapters are over. Otherwise, it's like rewriting the same chapter over and over and over again. And who wants to read that book? A lot of this may feel otherworldly. But in the same breath, do I feel you're ready? I do. Some of you may have already moved into this energy. You know, like a soulmate has already been introduced in your life. And just how I open a reading where I don't feel like, you know, I'm saying it in a way like, you know, this door needs to close for this door to open. Well, I do feel like certain doors need to close. But I do feel like for some of you, this soulmate may help you heal those those last broken little pieces and you for them also remember you're each other's mirrors reflection i feel like there's a lot of wisdom on the table you know the wisdom of your experiences your spiritual journey your human journey it's all here You know, and not all things can go right in our life. But what do we do when that happens? Do we get lost in it? Maybe for a little while. Justice seems important here, right? So I'm cutting those final ties. Again, whether it's energetically or literally. And then the Eight of Wands, and then everything starts moving quickly. I mean, I just love that you have the Four of Wands, the Marriage card mirroring the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups is mirroring trust. The situation is calling for you to have faith. And the marriage card is mirroring, calling in your soulmate. Your prayers, affirmations, and visual, 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 why do I keep saying it? Help bring you together. Vis visualization. That only happens when I'm doing readings. It's like my mouth doesn't want to work. I don't know. Like, I just feel like there's nothing really I want to look at. So let's just do one final round. Go right down the middle. Any other messages that want to come out? I feel like the one must for this, let's say, I do want this soulmate in my life. And I feel like they want you in their life is to take on the fool's energy. And again, as the fool, I'm not asking, will this go to marriage? Will it go to the Ten of Cups? But maybe as the fool, because I'm putting the past behind me, the, the opportunity, the chances of it going the whole way, I feel like are very good, especially again with the world here. I mean, Pisces, it just feels like it's your time.
I feel the strength within you. That maybe you yourself haven't felt in a while. You know, I hope if, if nothing else, this reading shows you or helps to teach you that when we do close those doors, a new door will open. And sometimes we might just be blown away. The chariot. Unlimited potential. That is the masculine and the feminine coming into balance. So maybe each soulmate had their own journey, their own lessons that they had to learn, and then you come together to help teach those remaining lessons, or at least you're each other's mirror to reflect upon, and then look at that, the world. I mean, need I say anything more? The chariot feels to me, and I don't know if I've ever described it this way, but it feels like the balance of the feminine and the masculine in the world is the next chapter. And again, I love that the world has the hermit right above it and you right below it, your major arcana right below it. So this feels like a very spiritual time, probably your most spiritual time. And I feel like that will only continue to increase. Like, like you'll want to learn more. Definitely, this is a time to pay attention to your intuition because you are being guided. And the way you're being guided, it feels very clear. And I feel like nothing is being left off the table. Like, this is talking about real love and real commitment. And that Knight of Pentacles can be anything. Anything that comes in that's going to enhance your life. Some of you, it's like you're taking that spirituality that you've been working on and learning and growing. And maybe now you're helping others. Or that opportunity arises. I feel like whatever arises, it's, it's for your best interest. Now, of course, pay attention to your intuition. I feel like that is the lesson here. Um, because if anything, let's just say, of a negative energy would come towards you, I don't feel like it stands a chance. I feel like you have grown so much, and therefore what's coming to you now has also grown. You know, I've been saying the law of attraction a lot, but I feel like it's important that we know that. The energy that we vibrate out is the energy that the universe must meet. When I can close these old doors, when I can jump into the fool's energy and just allow a new beginning without putting a whole lot of restrictions upon it, I just feel like you'll come back. Let's just say February 2027 and you're going to be like, look at me now. Look at what I did during this time period. Some of you, you're going to be married. Some of you, you're going to be very successful and married. Those who don't want to be married, you're still going to be in love. Probably living together. I mean, it's literally like showing us you having to walk through hell. So that when heaven presents itself to you, you see it and you say yes. And I'm going to let that be. Then I look under the world, the three of wands, an optimistic view. I'm going to let that be, Pisces. Um, I almost can't wait to do Virgos now. <clears throat> And I would advise, you know, I don't normally advise you watch another reading. That's completely up to you. But just because we're in the Virgo Pisces season, I feel like um, it may relate back to you. I haven't done it yet. I'll do it. 
I'll either do it tonight or tomorrow at the latest. Um, but anyways, Pisces, you're calling in your soulmate. This is a past life relationship. Um, you need to be open, right? You need to be able to express how you feel. Don't allow the people of the past to have any influence in this. Trust, have faith that everything is coming together just as it's meant to, especially if you've closed those old doors. Especially if you're saying, I'm ready for this rebirth. I love that the Knight of Cups is coming right over the full. That's connecting right to your soulmate. To me, my friends, that is divine timing. That is divine timing. I loved it. Um, I always love your reading, though. You know, I'm trying to, I can't remember your reading last month, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it was a little difficult. This feels like the next step. This feels like the closing of the difficulties and the opening to the beauty of the world. The parts of the world I haven't seen yet. Get ready. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. Um, I hope you listen to this with your spiritual ears because I'm thinking on a human level, you know, it still makes sense, but I feel like it's your spirituality that really needs to recognize this because then I feel like that allows you to believe that all is possible. The chariot, the masculine and the feminine are now in balance. The world it's time for this new chapter. Let's write it like a bestseller. All right, guys. I love you. I thank you. And I will see you next time at our table. Bye-bye.